one night it happened on the night of my birthday and what happened what happened was my family was involved in a car accident so it was me my father my mother and i have an older brother as well yes and so it was at nighttime and my mom was driving and there was a head-on collision high speed head-on collision and Mm -hmm you know, that was where everything changed. My mom had a head injury, severe brain trauma, and she was in a coma. And I, we were all injured. And that was like, that was the, the, the night that everything changed for me. I was, I was in the hospital. I was bedridden with the, so there was a halo brace. And then there were these weights that are attached to the halo brace to give me traction so that it heals properly. And so I was in bed for months. And of course, when you're in bed, you get bed sores, you know, your skin starts to shed, your hair starts to fall out. And it's scary. You know, I'm, I'm like, I'm nine years old. I'm, I'm a young girl. I don't understand what's happening. And all I can see is my skin shedding off. And it's, mm. there's, it's, it's pussing, it's oozing. My hair is falling out by the handful. Wow. And I'm, I'm, I'm afraid. Wow. And we were separated right from that car. So they, they needed to use the jaws of life to take her to extract her body out of the vehicle and at that time i was already conscious i was sleeping throughout and then i hear this loud crash and i'm awake and i see is the roof of the car and flashing lights right there was a pause at some point Mm. because it wasn't i wasn't able but you know i had the most most fantastic teachers and they brought the homework to me at the hospital (laughs) fantastic teachers and so i did my homework because i I always did that as I was told because I was very passive. So I just did as I was told. I did the homework and then my teachers would come and collect it. So they passed me. So I passed the grades. They had um, one daughter, right? And then when, like shortly after the birth of their their baby, you know, my my dad kind of like, he he came into the room and he told me, uh, he told me, he was like, you know, Grace, I, I, I don't think I can... I don't think I can take care of you anymore. You know, I, I have a, I have a family. I have a family now, and there's like responsibilities. I know so you, you, you understand. Like you, you understand, right? I, I think I'm. I, I don't. I don't have the ability anymore to to care for you. Um, there's just too much right now going on, right? Right. And so they knew that. They noticed. I didn't tell them. They noticed that I needed a place to stay. So when they after their meal, they settled the bill and they kind of asked me. Um, do you need to place a stay? You know, you can stay with us. Why don't mm. you stay with us? And I'm desperate. I don't know these people. I've never seen them before. They're strangers, right? But I followed them home that night, right? And now I realize, you know what? Yes, it is. And I don't want to give up anymore. I want to try. I want to have a better future. I didn't know exactly the details of it, but mm. I wanted something more. I wanted to be better. And I knew that no one's going to no one's going to give that to me and no one's going to support me there. I have to get it on my own. And so that's when I decided the only way I know how is to do well in school. And for me, it was like, I needed to get scholarship. I can't afford to pay for tuition. I don't know how much it costs, but I know I can't afford it because I'm making $2 a day in tip money. Yeah. Right? So I couldn't afford it. And so it was like, I knew about scholarships you could win, but you had to have a certain GPA. You had to do really well. You had to like, right. So I was like, okay, how can I small town grace, afford and be competitive for these scholarships, I have to work hard. So I did everything that I could to compete for these scholarships so that I could afford to go to school. My interest in neuroscience was seeded when I learned later on that my mom died of a brain trauma. Hmm. And I myself had a near spinal cord injury. All of that is central nervous system, right? Brain and nerves. All of that is like CNS. And so that's where neuroscience comes into play. And at that time, it was like the early 2000s. And neuroscience was like the burgeoning field. It was a, it was a younger field than it is now. And there's st- there was so much that we didn't know about the brain. And, I, and so it sealed, it seeded in me this interest to help patients like my mom who had brain tr- injuries or even brain disease. The final way that I made it happen is a um, very interesting, very resourceful, very creative thing. So you've heard of these clinical drug trials. Ah, yes, I've done yeah. one. I knew there was this connection between us. <laughs> <laughs> Which one did you do? <laughs> there was a, an, an experimental drug for cardiovascular disease. When, when you want something and you say you want it, it doesn't matter that you say you want it. You've got to look at your actions. Mm. And if you look at your actions and, and, and the fruit in your life, the outcomes, and you still don't have what you say you wanted, then maybe it's time to really get honest with yourself. Did you really want it in the beginning? Did you actually want it that bad? 
and give yourself the permission. It's okay to realize, you know what? Actually, I didn't want that. I thought I did, but I didn't. And it's okay to, to say that, but to persist and keep saying, I want it, I want it. And then get depressed and upset that you still don't have it yet. It's just mm. the cycle of, of, of destruction, of, of self-sabotage, you know, professor. So I, I had this vision for myself while well, well, I'm going to be a professor and that's what I want because I have a PhD. And um, so I, I played the game, right? I published I published in competitive journals. I wrote a book. I played the whole game. I, mm. I built conver- uh, networking. You know, I built the right relationships. I went to academic conferences. I presented my work. I disseminated my findings. I, did, I played the whole game, but I wasn't happy. The moment that certain key things happen in one person's life compared to another person's life, it's going to be completely different. Mm. Right? And who's to say that you have to have all your ducks in a row at this chronological age right and who's to say that you have to have it all figured out when you are blank years old like we are trained as a society to always focus on the strategies and tactics right we're, we're always trained to think about okay what am i going to do next mm. and what am i going to do and what are the strategies to get there i'm not i don't have what i want right now but i want to have this so what do i got to do what are the strategies to get to have that right and what they're forgetting is that you can't have unless you're, you, you become. So having a high self-awareness to me means you know the boundaries of where your knowledge begins and where it ends. So you're able to have clarity. You're able to ask the right questions to know, is there something that I don't know that I don't know? Possibly. Mm. Or is there something, is it possible that there, there, are, there are things that I know I don't know? And I challenge this. I challenge the notion. And I ask, I ask everyone to, to ask the question, why are you working? And this is this video I created I, where I open the video by saying, why are you working? If you're saying it's because you want to pay the bills and make money to pay the bills, then you've lost sight of your vision and you've lost sight of your dreams. Right? If that's the reason why you're working and that's the only reason why you're working is to make money mm. to pay the bills, you've lost sight of your dreams.